everybody. Welcome back to Sweetwater Place. I'm Kat. Glad to have you here. Um, this is my sixth and seventh week post-op uh, check-in, <laughs> post-laparoscopic uh, hysterectomy check-in. And if you're new here uh, to Sweetwater Place family, I have a uh, playlist with all of the videos. Check it out below with all of the hysterectomy videos from beginning before the procedure through the procedure and as I recovered um, and what I shared with you and what I found out about my experience going through this um, so this is um, seven six and seven weeks okay so has anything really changed well I saw the doctor about just before six weeks and he did an internal check and I want to put a disclaimer too I'm not giving anybody advice I'm just putting this out there in case it helps anybody else to see what someone else's process went 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 like okay um, and then also um, if you know this probably isn't one for the kids <laughs> this is very very intimate especially this one very intimate uh, details and uh, subject matter regarding women and women things. So um, unless you're interested in that, you know, that's that's what we're talking about here. So um, I'm gonna be very frank because uh, if someone is going through this process and they're looking for this information, um, they have a lot of questions and that is what they want is they want frankness. And um, they, want, they want it, it's different from when, when I was looking through videos for this, it was different information coming from medical professionals, which was very important, uh, but it was different from the personal experience that I was hearing from the people who are actually going through the recovery. And that uh, was equally as important to me. So frankness was something that I really appreciated because when you go through a process, it's very raw and you are going to be right smack dab in the middle of it. So when I went to see the doctor at six weeks or so just before, um, he looked inside and he said, everything looks like it's healing fine. But at that point, right around just before six weeks, he said, I said, do I have any stitches that are still visible to you? And he said, yes, you do. You still do have stitches. Um, so he said, but it looks like it's healing, but I can still see that there's like a red tone to the whole area. So it's just, he said, it is still going to be healing. So, um, so he said, don't be surprised, you know, if you go to the bathroom and you see that there's a few stitches that have come out, don't get in, you know, don't get upset. It's totally normal because they're dissolvable. So that will happen. He said, don't take a picture and send it to me like another one of my patients did. So I, I said, okay, I won't, I promise. Um, I will tell you to this point, I am deep into, uh, I'm in the seventh week now, approaching the eighth week, and I haven't seen any stitches yet. So I don't know, you know, if that's going to be a thing. At the same time, that being said, I would have to say I don't constantly check and look and, you know, I just do my thing in the bathroom and I go on and I'm like, oh, I didn't, I'm not looking. So maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But he said, you know, because it's still healing, don't be afraid if you're going to see some pink, you know, pink discharge from time to time. Totally normal, he said, because, you know, you still are healing, but it's totally okay. Don't worry about it. Um, and then that was going to be the last time I saw him. And so let me look at my notes. I don't want to skip over anything. Okay, so um, as far as the pain goes, I feel so much better. I don't take pain uh, killers in any way, Tylenol even, or ibuprofen for that. Um, I just kind of like deal with it if it comes. Now I feel really good. I feel really mobile. Um, but one thing that I've noticed is that if I do overdo it just a little bit, you still will feel the, you know, like the pulling maybe some pins and needles, uh, some pain, because yes, it is healing. It's going to take a while, but that's just um, something to tell you to pull back and, you know, calm it down a little bit, sit down, make a cup of tea, uh, get a heat pad. Just, you know, it's not, it's not like it was at all. It is really greatly improved. Um, so there is hope. I still do um, have bladder sensitivity. And that is what I think I was most surprised uh, about was, you know, all of the work that my bladder went through in this process, um, it really, really irritated it. And I don't know really what 
all happened to it, but it is still, um, you know, it gets a little sore and there's still a lot of sensitivity in that. And that might be because I have IC, which is a bladder condition, interstitial cystitis. Maybe that is just uh, having a hard time dealing with that. But um, it's, it's it, you know, it's not anything I need to take a painkiller for or anything like that. So that's very doable. Um, doctor said, of course, no intimate activity in the area until after eight weeks, which is fine. I We want to be completely healed. So still, that's it. He, he didn't give me the go ahead. He said, you know, wait until after eight weeks and you should be, you should be fine. Um, I did see the pictures from the uh, lab report and I would have to say I'm very glad to have done the surgery <laughs> because from what I saw, it was, there was kind of a mess in there. You know, there were tumors on each, and each of the ovaries were just completely covered, and there was endometriosis um, in the whole area. So he actually had to send um, like a specimen from the rectal area as well, because the endometriosis had um, kind of gotten, you know, in different places, and double check that it wasn't cancerous, you know, anywhere. The uh, uterus itself, was full of fibroids and it was like over three times bigger than it was should have been, which was interesting to see on a picture as well. But um, so it, it looks, and then he took a picture after everything was all cleaned up and it, it looks pretty empty in there now. <laughs> It's, it's all cleaned up except for the stitches. Um, so I would have to say, you know, I was really reluctant at, at, at first because I thought, um, I'm used to the kind of pain that I was carrying around and I didn't know if I wanted to start this whole process or if it would be worth it. And I would have to say overall, looking back, I'm really glad that I did it. I'm glad that I have all that out. I can't believe you. I just keep looking down at my, my shirt and realizing that the extra bulk that I was carrying in that area is has just gone down quite a bit. It feels so much different. So when I used to lay down in my bed on my back, if you've ever had like a, a baby laying on your tummy there or a small puppy, you know, um, or a very big cat, and they're kind of pushing on the abdomen there, you kind of feel it, you feel it pushing in toward your back. And that's what it always felt like having, you know, this big uterus heavy with, you know, all this stuff in it. And now when I lay down, it doesn't feel like that at all. It feels totally different and it, it feels almost like another body in that way, you know? So it's, I'm really amazed um, at the difference that it makes. It definitely made a difference in, um, you know, not pushing on the bladder, all of those fibroids pushing on the bladder. And uh, I'm able to go for longer periods of time without running to the bathroom as often as I was. Um, so I, I'm just amazed at the Still difference. not picking up any weights over 10 pounds. Uh, I'm moving slowly into my workout routine. So 30 minutes in the morning, walking 30 minutes in the evening. But um, I'm finding that every two days of that, I'm having to pull back a little bit because it kind of gets the pains kind of, eh, they start kind of like little fireworks coming back again. And so I, I know to pull it back just a little bit, get a little more rest on that third day. Um, so I'm keeping that in check. Uh, when I start, what I'm going to do with weights in, in being back in the gym is to work very slowly and just really listen to the body as far as the pains go. I still will have to have a yearly check up and that is for the vaginal area to make sure that it is still healthy and that there are no problems so even though I don't have to have like you know a cervical check and go in for that yearly pap smear um, that's done uh, but I do need to check out the area and make sure that we're all good now at the eight week mark um, I'm going to go back to um, an estradiol it's a it's a, an estradiol cream. It's a hormone cream that's made for the vaginal area. You you insert it internally, and um, that was given to me by my actually by my urologist uh, because before she she sent me over here to um, the OBGYN 
to build up the area and make sure that it was healthy because she was hoping that, you know, that would help to keep the IC from activating my interstitial cystitis and then, you know, bladder infections and whatnot. She said this might help, you know, just to help build up the whole area of good bacteria. And um, so I am going to continue that because it is made to build up the flora in the vaginal area and keep it very healthy. And that is exactly what I want, especially after it's been through all this. We want to make sure that it's nice and healthy. Um, and that is not going to be a problem. Now, she had told me that I would be okay to use that during the healing process. But what I was doing was going with my OBGYN doctor's advice. And he said nothing in there until after eight weeks, period. So I didn't even want to take a chance on, um, you know, using any kind of applicator or anything and hurting myself. So I I just did what he said and followed his orders. Um, okay, so what I wanted to say is this has been, you know, had its moments of real scariness <laughs> from time to time. Maybe my anxiety was up beforehand, not knowing what I was going to go through. And I want to say just being able to share this process with you guys and know that you were with me going through this, it really, really helped me and it helped me to keep my focus away from overthinking all of the possibilities that could go wrong and keeping me focused on just being objective and taking the data and reporting to you guys and documenting this process. It really helped to keep me focused and I really want to thank you for sharing the journey with me and again, if if you are new, I hope that you will subscribe. If you have enjoyed this process and going through with me, please like the video. It will really help to get it out to more people who are maybe looking for this than it might help. Um, and then that being said, I want to invite you, if you haven't subscribed yet, to stick around because we do all kinds of things here. Um, and very soon what we're going to be doing is a decluttering challenge. We're also going to be, uh, during the month of January, doing a no-spend challenge. And that is going to be very interesting because we're going to be living out of our pantry as much as we can during the month of January. So that's going to be a challenge as well. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope that you will uh, tune into the next video. And again, I want to thank you for going through this very important process for me. You don't know what it means to have been able to share it with you. All right. God bless you. And I will see you soon.